Hello, everyone, friends, colleagues, partners. On behalf of Digital Green Team, our partners, and our donor USAID, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the National Dissemination Event of Project Samvad to share with you all the key lessons, experiences, and insights of, 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 over our last six years' journey with our partners in which we try to strengthen and support reproductive, maternal, newborn, and child health, what we call as RMNCH initiatives in six states in India. Project Samvad focused in using and applying appropriate technologies to deliver impactful messaging to inspire positive health and nutrition seeking behavior among local communities across the geographies where we work. And today is the culmination event of this project, and we are excited to share with you what we learned and also to hear from you what you feel uh, through, uh, through this uh, learning process. Over the course of this event, for next about an hour or so, you will soon hear from uh, more on this approach and its effect effectiveness in driving RMNCH programs in India, not only from uh, my colleagues Digital Green, but of also, also our, our partners. I'm delighted and welcome today some of our esteemed dignitaries who are attending uh, this, this event, including Sri Balamur Gandhi, IAS officer and CEO of Jivika Bihar, Sri Jagannanda, Jagadananda, co founder and one of the most respected civil society leaders in India, and co founder of Center for Youth and Social Development, Odisha. We'll be having Mohua Roy Chaudhary, senior program coordinator of Jivika, and we are also having Dr. Rajesh Khanna, a senior professional and senior director of programs for Wish Foundation. They will be joined by my Digital Green colleagues, including Farhad Ali, who is the chief of party of this program and also leads some very uh, other important uh, initiatives within Digital Green around institutionalization and partnerships. Uh, we will also be joined by Dr. Namita Singh, Director of Knowledge, Strategy and MEL Functions in Digital Green, and Erika Arya, who is uh, heading uh, some of the communication product related work in Digital Green uh, work in India. Uh, we'll also have uh, Vijay Paul Raj, Reproductive Health Advisor of USAID, who will be moderating the panel discussion that will be following uh, some of the presentations. And we are indeed grateful to have with us Dr. Sankita Patil, a senior US Foreign Service Officer who is currently heading the health office at the USAID in India. We are all ex incredibly excited to have uh, this distinguished uh, uh, dignitaries as a part of this discussion. And welcome once again uh, to the Samvad National Dissemination event. During the course of this discussion, do feel free to submit your queries, your comments through the Zoom question and answer facility. And we'll try and get to respond to as much as uh, queries as possible. Uh, without further delaying, once again, welcoming you, um, handing it, passing it back to my colleague Farhad to take forward this event. Over to you, Farhad. So much, uh, Krish. Uh, please allow me to share my screen, and I'll uh, walk you through a 10-minute presentation on Samvad and its approaches. Um, so uh, let me begin by giving you a brief um, uh, about the Project Samvad. So Project Samvad, um, we started uh, in the year 2015. And uh, uh, in this project, uh, we are trying to improve uh, the maternal and child health outcomes um, uh, for women and, and, and children. Uh, we, are, we have been using two uh, strategies uh, to, do the, to do that. Uh, what we are doing is, one, one is uh, we are trying to improve uh, the adoption of uh, family planning, modern family planning, practices among uh, the eligible couples, and we are trying to improve uh, the nutritional behavior of mother and children. Uh, the focus that we have in this project uh, is around um, the 1,000 days uh, of women. Um, uh, and and, and uh, the project is focusing all of its activities around, around this period. In this process, we are also uh, uh, working to enhance the uh, capabilities uh, at the community level and also at, at the system level uh, at, in the district and also at the state. So this is something we are, we are trying to do in this project. 
Uh, here in this slide, you will see uh, that uh, uh, we are targeting certain behavior across different uh, life stages uh, 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 of women and, and children. For example, uh, during the pre-birth period, we are focusing the targets related to uh, ANC services, uh, the IFA supplementation, and improving the dietary diversity. And uh, during the post-birth period, we are uh, focusing around exclusive breastfeeding, uh, dietary diversity, and uh, increasing the uh, gap between the two parts. Similarly, for infant and young child feeding practices, these are some of the uh, 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 behaviors that we are, are targeting under this project. So looking at it from the social norm point of view, uh, there are certain behaviors uh, related to family planning uh, that uh, this pro project is focusing on. As I was mentioning before also, like uh, we, we, we're focusing our intervention around the use of modern contraception, uh, maintaining a gap of around three years and, and uh, encouraging and promoting interspousal communication. Uh, around safe motherhood, uh, we are focusing around uh, 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 taking up uh, uh, minimum four ANC visit, uh, consumption of 100 plus IFA tablet, and increasing the food and uh, uh, dietary diversity of, of women. Uh, similarly, for healthy childhood, uh, uh, we are focusing around uh, the importance of uh, early breastfeeding and exclusive breastfeeding, complementary feeding. So these are some of uh, the activities um, and uh, the, the spe specific uh, behavior related to social norms that we are uh, focusing on on this project. So this, this slide uh, primarily uh, tells us the approach that we have taken in this project. So we have a community-based uh, video approach, and this community-based video approach is uh, primarily um, uh, having these four key elements. So the first key element is the engagement of the community. So we work very closely with the community, identify key barriers and issues, and the areas where the communication is needed. And then we contextualize uh, all that we, we want to develop. So which means that we do <clears throat> a lot of formative research. We work with the uh, uh, families and community to identify the relevant key topics that uh, uh, require interventions and communication. In this process, we uh, work with the health system and uh, build the capacity in terms of uh, identifying those issues, writing the scripts, do the formative research. Uh, how to manage uh, the data and, and use the data to inform the program. And sustainability around this is a very key, uh, uh, is, is an important area that has, we have been taking care of. So which means that we are very closely working with the, with the, with the partners and engage them and involve them at all the stages of, of the project development and rollout. So under Samvad, what we have done, uh, in addition to human-mediated dissemination of the community videos in face-to-face -face meeting, we have also used uh, complementary channels, uh, which include uh, IVRS system to reach to those people who are not able to join the face-to-face -face dissemination. We are also using community radio to ensure that uh, the program remain inclusive and reach out to those people who are not able to join uh, the face-to-face -face communication. And we have also used WhatsApp-based dissemination, which means that the project has created a community level group of the people, and then these short videos are pushed to those uh, community level groups that, that the frontline functionaries create. What we have found is that roughly 85% of the survey population are exposed to the content. So which means that the program is able to reach out to uh, uh, the, the population. We also find, found that uh, the, these complementary channels are actually helpful in terms of uh, maintaining the knowledge level and, and, and uh, enhancing it further. And it is also sort of uh, uh, helpful for um, for us uh, to sustain that, you know, what they have learned is 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 continued over a period of time. The next slide uh, primarily tells you the, the the holistic approach that we have taken in this project. So the community remains at the center of uh, all that we do. So we, which means that we 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 engage uh, the government partners and uh, you utilize uh, the the frontline functionaries of the structure that they have created. We, we build the ICT related platforms that are available in a specific community. We develop the community the community based video and then through these fun frontline functionaries we, we, we bring those uh, content and videos to the community. And this has actually helped us to mobilize the community and, and help us to develop an interface between the families and the health system. So this is how this entire um, 
Sambhat approach is functional. This slide talks about mainly the achievement that we have in this project. So we have roughly trained uh, 5,000 plus frontline functionaries on various uh, uh, methods and package of, package of practices. We, all, we have also directly reached to 700,000 women directly, and, and we have created roughly more than 100 uh, videos and some 50 uh, audio messages. Uh, but when you work in the in in these uh, complex uh, large scale project there are certain challenges that you come across so these are some of the challenges that we have experienced in this project so one such challenge is the is that introducing new technology and tool requires consistent efforts to engage with the partners at every phase of the product design and implementation second challenge that we experienced was related to layering of the project approaches within the existing extension system that the government is having. So it's important that the flexibility uh, is, is, is adopted. And, and we try to align the program priorities with the program priorities and the, uh, of the government and the partners. Another important uh, issue that we experience is, is again related to you know, uh, having the flexibility to adjust ourselves according to the uh, data system that the government and other partners are having. So it's important that we align those data system and collection system and, and uh, you know, uh, make it in a manner manner that which is easily absorbed within the government system. So these are some of the key you know uh, issues and challenges we experienced. We also have a lot of like uh, learning throughout this journey, and based on that we have certain recommendation. What we found is that it's really important to you know create the hyper local content because the issues and challenges are different from different in different locations. So it's important that hyper local content is created. Second important th thing that we find is that. Uh, uh, other than the human mediated uh, dissemination of uh, the community values, it's also important to have a complementary channel, which allows people to, uh, you know, access the content uh, over their telephones, over their smartphones, and and uh, and also through, you know, sharing of uh, of the content. So, so this hybrid approach is more effective than simple human mediated uh, 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 dissemination. Third important thing that we realize is that the cyclic process of formative research is really important. So, which means that you continue uh, getting the feel of what's happening in the field, what are the new and uh, relatively uh, 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 different issues that the community is experiencing. So, it's important to take a note of that and use that to develop new content and new video, and then further push it with in the, in the community. From the uh, skill building and capacity enhancement point of view, it's important that you identify the right kind of people in terms of the correct skill mix so means that if you have a if you have to create a team at the district level it's important that you have a person who can make a good video you have a person who can use the data effectively you have a person who can manage the uh, logistics effectively so so try and bringing those people who can complement each other it's really important so these are some of the learning and experiences that we have in the project so that's all i wanted to uh, sort of speak on this uh, day today so I'll stop here and I'll pass it on to my colleague, Namita Singh. Namita Singh uh, uh, is uh, the director of uh, knowledge, learning, and meal uh, uh, in our organization. And she will be uh, talking more about uh, the experiences, the, the surveys, the studies that we have con conducted under the project Samvad. So I'll, I, I'm uh, handing it over to, to Namita. Namita, over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Farhad. So, uh, yeah, good evening, uh, everyone. It's really my pleasure to be presenting the impact uh, that Samvad project has been able to have uh, in the six years uh, of its intervention. Um, to track intervention exposure, knowledge and adoption, and uh, also understand the learnings and utility of the new extension tools and innovations, you know, which, which Farhad just talked about. Uh, we used uh, several different methods, uh, actually, and each study and assessment had its uh, own objective and served different purposes from being able to track performance and improve the intervention design uh, to get uh, getting community response remotely on different extension methods and, and, and several such uh, uh, purposes. And in this presentation, we will uh, share the findings from these studies and also discuss briefly about the methods themselves uh, that we used. Uh, uh, one of them was the periodic clean survey, which was conducted in six rounds in five uh, states uh, that we worked in. Uh, it was supported by London School 
School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And the data was collected by a third party agency physically at the village level from uh, randomly selected participants. We could not conduct more rounds as we had actually planned uh, due to the pandemic. So towards the uh, end of the project, we were actually conducting uh, phone based surveys where, you know, data was collected uh, from randomly selected community members whose phone numbers were available with digital uh, green. We also conducted uh, IVR uh, based surveys and along with that qualitative uh, assessments uh, were also done and data was collected by the MEL and program teams to support uh, all the information that was uh, and the data uh, that was coming through these different surveys. Just briefly on the intervention uh, exposure, uh, which uh, 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 on which we collected data on both in uh, both the lean survey as well uh, as the so uh, as the phone survey, the overall exposure was found to be sixty two percent from the lean surveys and showed an increase to eighty five percent from the phone surveys. Um, and because we furthered the use of several different extension uh, methods, particularly during during the pandemic, we also collected data on exposure by different channels uh, that we had used um, and found that uh, forty percent of the response were exposed uh, to WhatsApp groups that were formed during the pandemic. Only 21.6% actually reported watching videos through the Pico-based uh, group disseminations, which was uh, sort of expected. And 80% through other non-digital sources, uh, which uh, included frontline workers and family members who were themselves actually watching these videos on other uh, digital channels. Um, so the following slides will now show the impact on the knowledge and practice of the key health and nutrition behaviors uh, that were being promoted uh, through the project. Um, and when we look at the knowledge of the respondents, uh, then we find that there has actually been an increase from when the lean survey was conducted in December 2019 to uh, June 2021, when we collected uh, data through, through the phone uh, survey. And uh, two behaviors, mothers uh, diet during pregnancy and hand washing, show a significantly high percentage of respondents having the required knowledge. And the ANC checkups, and gap between two births uh, is also quite high at 60% and 80% respectively. Similarly, when we look at the practice of key health and nutrition behaviors, uh, we find an increase in adoption of all the behaviors uh, that were promoted, uh, ANC checkups, exclusive breastfeeding and hand washing. And the practice of exclusive breastfeeding was as high as almost 90%, both in lean survey as well as the phone survey. So through you know, these findings in uh, knowledge as well as practice uh, from both these surveys, uh, we can say that Samad has been able to have a positive impact over a period of time on the knowledge and practice of the key behaviors that were being promoted through the project using the different extensions uh, tools. Uh, as I'd mentioned earlier, we also uh, used IVR uh, survey, the interactive voice response system at three points, uh, baseline, midline, and endline between November 2020 and July 2021 um, on the knowledge indicators. And uh, the results here uh, show that there has been a consistent increase in the knowledge of the respondents on, on the key knowledge behaviors from baseline to midline to endline. And in the endline, uh, we also see that the results are actually comparable to the phone survey, uh, around 60% of respondents having uh, knowledge uh, and, pra uh, and practicing for ANC checkups, more than 70% having knowledge of gap between two births and 73% uh, having knowledge about mother's diet during pregnancy. So this sort of kind of like reiterates the findings uh, that, have, that were available through the other surveys as well on the impact of the uh, Sambad project. Uh, we'd also conducted a community radio intervention uh, in Uttarakhand and, and Chhattisgarh uh, and uh, did an assessment of the, of the community uh, radio intervention, um, again, collecting baseline and endline uh, uh, data. Uh, and the assessment was done uh, with the intervention uh, team. The assessment of the intervention was done with, with, with their support. And uh, they collected uh, data from approximately 1,000 respondents, uh, both in the baseline as well as the end line, uh, from 10 villages uh, in, uh, in each of the 10 radio stations in the two states. And uh, what we found was that 97% 
uh, of the respondents reported listening to Sambad community radio program. And this was, of course, a pretty uh, significant finding for us. And there was an 80, 18% point increase uh, in respondents who use radio as a source of information. So this does somewhere exhibit um, uh, the popularity of community radio uh, in, in the communities. Um, on the knowledge parameters, we found that knowledge on child and mother's dietary diversity increased. Uh, however, we could not find consistent results on other uh, parameters. And one of the reasons could be that the intervention was pretty short. It was just over uh, three months. And maybe that's why we could not see many consistent and significant changes or trends uh, during these periods. Uh, so just talking briefly about uh, the, the methods themselves, since we uh, use several, uh, several of them, uh, what uh, we learned about the lean survey was that with the statistical process control methodology, the SPC methodology, that can serve as a good tool to actually track progression on indicators. And therefore, uh, it can be quite effective. Uh, for monitoring of interventions and even assessing the overall impact um, that a project has. They are more robust and representative of the community since data is collected from random respondents at the village level. The villages themselves um, are uh, selected randomly from all intervention villages. Lean surveys can also be a good tool for advocacy uh, because they show this progression uh, uh, in, in a simple graphical uh, form over different points of times. And this also sort of like enables uh, us to course correct and improve our intervention on a regular basis. You know, for, for instance, designing strategies to reach difficult to reach villages when we see that intervention exposure is lesser in certain areas or conducting refresher trainings to improve performance of frontline workers or improving focus on areas where performance was not as high as we expected, for instance, uh, family planning, so designing strategies uh, to improve our design, uh, uh, design there. Um, phone surveys for us proved good to understand the feasibility of using different tools uh, that we use, like uh, video, WhatsApp, chatbots, uh, etc., and the implementation process as well. Uh, one uh, major drawback uh, of the phone surveys uh, was that they might not be representative of the entire population, since the surveys being conducted uh, with respondents whose phone numbers we already have available uh, with us. However, there are, of course, major uh, advantages to phone surveys. They're less costly than methods like lean survey. They're less time consuming as well. And especially during the pandemic, it became you know, one of the most useful ways uh, for collecting data uh, remotely, which we couldn't have uh, collected otherwise. Um, when we conducted the IVR survey, um, uh, we also found that they can also be used to actually monitor program implementation um, on, on a regular basis. But because it's an interactive voice response based system where a respondent has to key in their responses from the menu of options, often it is you know, simple questions that can be better answered and, and more complicated or detailed answers cannot uh, really be gathered. So usually just a yes or no uh, sort of um, uh, questions are suitable for that. It of course is less uh, costly than several uh, other methods and responses can be collected uh, automatically without, um, uh, with limited human intervention. Um, however, you know, to get a better response rate from an IVR survey calls need to be sent multiple times uh, to those who have not responded. And in IVR surveys, typically um, the response rate tends to be lower than other methods where human intervention is, in, is involved. Um, and uh, sometimes when it comes to data analysis, it's also a bit difficult to understand what the reason was for low uh, response rate or non-response. Is it due to the lack of knowledge or uh, you know, there, there's some other reasons? Um, and of course, a similar drawback as the phone survey of reaching out uh, only to respondents whose phone numbers you actually have available, so not uh, as representative as is uh, possible. Um, so this, this project has you know, really been able to create a significant impact has been evident from different studies that we've uh, conducted. We've also had in-depth learning on different extension tools, uh, which, which Farhad mentioned. And we really hope that uh, all of these learnings and understandings will actually support uh, our partners that we've worked with to take this work forward as they scale up the use of digital disseminations for promoting behavior change. Um, and that's all from my side. Uh, thank you. I think we do have some time for some uh, questions as, as well. 
Right. So I'll hand over to Farhad. Thank you so much, uh, for your presentation. Uh, there are a couple of questions and we'll be able to take only uh, one or two questions, but we'll uh, be sharing the responses back to the participants very soon. So the first question that we would like to take is, what the lean survey tool and the phone survey tool was same? If you can, you or Sanjeev can elaborate a bit on that. And uh, is there any impact of Corona pandemic on behaviors in the operational area? Maybe you or uh, Sanjeev can take up uh, these yeah. questions. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll invite Sanjeev uh, to answer about the lean survey tool and the phone survey tool. So um, the tools were uh, different. Actually, the uh, lean survey uh, tool is quite exhaustive um, because that was a face-to-face -face survey. And the phone survey, we know that we can have just uh, a very small survey over phone for uh, uh, on an average 20 minutes. So the, uh, that uh, tool was uh, different, quite small. And the purpose was uh, to understand the feasibility of different uh, different tools that we were using, like uh, WhatsApp, Chatbot, uh, those tools, and but uh, we tried to uh, uh, get some knowledge and practices uh, questions also. So the tool was not exactly the same, but the questions which we are comparing are the same here. Okay, it's like knowledge and practice questions, they they were the same questions. Thank you, Sanjeev. Uh so, so I'm going to take the second question, which is about, uh, is there any impact of Corona pandemic on the behaviors in the operational area? So what happened is that uh, during the COVID period, we readjusted the program approaches and we layered COVID related information on the existing videos that we have around health and nutrition and other behaviors. So what we found uh, in, the, in a survey that we conducted in the program is that uh, the content around uh, personal hygiene and hand wash has actually increased uh, um, uh, in the project area. Uh, so uh, most of the people during this period listen to uh, the hand washing related uh, audio content and the videos which were on, on uh, personal hygiene and hand wash. So that was the kind of change we, we, we really uh, saw during the COVID period. In the interest of time, there are a couple of more questions and we promise to uh, reach out back to you with the responses very soon. But uh, in the interest of time, please allow me to move forward uh, in, in the webinar. So uh, we also have uh, uh, Mr. Vijay Paul Raj with us uh, and um, we'll be having a panel discussion around uh, uh, the way forward in the project Samvad, what we have conducted what we have done in this project and what it is indicating towards the future. So to take it forward, we have uh, Vijay Paul Raj with us. Uh, Vijay uh, work with the USAID in India as a senior health system strengthening advisor. He currently leading the health system strengthening investment within USAID and uh, supporting and strengthening the critical care in secondary and tertiary level facility. Uh, USAID uh, emergency response to COVID-19 pandemic in building oxygen ecosystem, strengthening laboratories for COVID testing and genome sequencing, uh, and USAID technical assistance for COVID-19 vaccine delivery in India. He also focuses on health policy and advocacy, supply chain management, and digital health solution as part of uh, uh, his portfolio within uh, USAID. Vijay has over 20 years of public health experience and, and has worked in public health NGOs, private sector organization, and corporate foundation prior to joining USAID. He has been working in USAID for the last 13 years, and Vijay is a postgraduate in medical and psychiatric uh, uh, social work. So may I please invite uh, uh, Vijay to uh, uh, start the panel discussion. Uh, over to you, Vijay. Thank you, uh, Farad, and good evening, everyone. Um, I thank uh, Digital Green for giving me this opportunity to uh, facilitate this panel. Um, so I have been managing this project as an activity manager and uh, for the last uh, for five years. And uh, it's my privilege to, um, to facilitate this panel and uh, to be part of this uh, end of project dissemination. Uh, Project Samvad uh, has successfully demonstrated community mobilization and behavior change using a community-based video approach. 
where hyper local content is developed and uh, human mediated dissemination is facilitated by frontline functionaries as you all know samvad also demonstrated use of complementary channels such as whatsapp and ivrs in dissemination of health and nutrition messages and videos this basically to layer over the community based uh, um, uh, video approach and uh, you know amplify the messages that are being uh, shared through the community based videos layering the other technologies the uh, digital technologies that are available to uh, amplify those messages we are at a very interesting juncture now uh, where virtual con connections and engagement is rapidly expanding uh, there is a lot of discussions and experimentation on how it can be used for health and nutrition public health and particularly rmnch has been a domain that has been dominated by in person face to face engagement for decades however there remains issues challenges such as quality there remains questions on how virtual engagement would help the domain where in person engagement has limitations what we are referring to virtual community engagement is that people or group connect and meet outside a physical of a physical meeting space such as a social media platform or a text based exchange or outreach to the people the approach has the potential to increase the participation of a high number of people who otherwise may not participate in discussions or in physical community meetings for so many reasons such as physical distance availability of time social dynamics and so on to share thoughts opinions opportunities and experiences we have some esteemed and accomplished sector experts and leaders with us today uh in on this panel and uh let me begin in introducing our panelists um first we have mr jagan jagatnanda mr jagatnanda is a mentor and co-founder of center for youth and social development cyst in bhubaneswar he was a state information commissioner and a member of the state plan planning board of odisha he was a visiting fellow at civicus world alliance for citizen participation and worked on the issues of legitimacy transparency and accountability within civil society at the kennedy school of government at harvard university presently is a member of the standing committee representing the civil society organization as an expert in the drafting of the national vision 2035 document at the niti ayog and coordinating the niti sub committee on youth engagement and disaster and environment thank you mr jagannanda for joining us today and we have ms erica who is a product head uh, from digital green she has been focusing on designing and developing technological solutions in the area of health nutrition and agriculture under project samvad she enabled the setup and successful execution of ivr services which is samvad mobile vani currently she is leading the efforts on ai powered chatbots in digital green thanks erika for joining to us uh, with us today and we have ms akai mins akai mins is a leading nhm jarkhand team uh, as a state program manager she is from oran tribal community of jarkhand qualified in masters in social work and has over 10 years of experience working in community tribal development livelihoods and has been involved in public health specifically on communitization under nhm she has also presented papers on tribal issues and women's right at present with nhm jarkhand she is leading 42000 asha who are called sayas in jarkhand thank you akai for joining with us today and lastly we have mahua roy choudhury mahua is a program coordinator for governance and knowledge management in jivika in bihar rural livelihood promotion society government of bihar a development professional with specialization in knowledge management program management public policy management institution building and rural livelihood promotion she focuses on enhancing organization capacity in strategic planning to push projects forward 
She has work experience of over 20 years in the sector and has worked from various platforms of governmental and non-governmental agencies such as Social Welfare Department, Government of Bihar, Kapat, UNDP, Pradhan, and Basics. She has been a core team member in conceptualizing World Bank supported projects, Bihar Integrated Social Protection Strengthening Project in Bihar, and Bihar Transformative Development Project and DFID supported sector wide approach for strengthening health. She has been instrumental in instilling professional youths in the development sector by strengthening the Young Professionals Program. She is a Shevning Claude Leadership Fellow and also a Nafik Fellow. Thank you, Mahar, for joining with us today. And sorry, I think we, uh, we have Dr. Rajesh Kanna also. Dr. Rajesh Kanna from Wish Foundation. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Kanna is a medical doctor trained in pediatrics and public health with 25 years of experience as a clinician, team leader, program manager, researcher, technical expert, policy maker, and advocate for healthcare solutions in the field of maternal, newborn, child, adolescent health, nutrition, and health system strengthening. He has rich experience of working with different institutions like a missionary hospital, health policy making unit in the UK, a government supported resource center in India, and a global child right based civil society organization. Additionally, he has served as a technical expert at the international level, working with reputed organizations like NICE UK, WHO Geneva, WHO CRO, and the Global Technical Leadership Group of the Save the Children. Dr. Kanna has a keen interest in bridging the gap between research, policy, and programs for developing healthcare solutions for the most vulnerable population, adopting a people-centered approach. Dr. Kanna joined LEHS WISH in October 2021 and is providing technical managerial leadership to the program aimed at strengthening primary healthcare using technology and innovations. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rajesh Kanna, for joining us uh, on this panel. So I now place some questions to the panel panelists here. And I'll go, let me go with uh, uh, Mr. Jagannanda first. Sir, um, CYSD uh, partnership with Samvad project has been a very unique partnership. In Samvad, uh, largely it has been partnership with governments, the NHM, uh, the livelihood uh, mission and the nutrition mission in all the states that we uh, implemented this project. But in Odisha, we had the opportunity to uh, partner with you an NGO which had a very uh, strong uh, foot, footprints in the um, uh, uh, tribal communities in the um, um, uh, state of Odisha. Um, so, uh, actually, the, the, the experience that we wanted to have with CYST is basically to test how this approach, a community-based approach, can be uh, adopted by an NGO in their ongoing work and how it can be uh, taken to scale and can be institutionalized within your ongoing system. So this was basically our intention when we partnered with you. So now at the end of the project, how do you feel uh, partnering with the Samvat project? You using this hybrid approach uh, in your uh, uh, ongoing work, uh, how, how did you find uh, it helped you in engaging with the communities on the ground what, according to you, would be required to effectively engage communities using digital channels? And also, I have a question to ask you, like, how do you think uh, the, the learnings that you had from uh, uh, using this approach will, will be helpful for you to uh, kind of uh, utilize this uh, method or approach in, in, in the government system, you know, the, the, maybe in the NHM in uh, the state of Odisha or the um, Women and Child Development uh, uh, Program, ICDS program. Over okay. to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay, Sangeeta, 
Farad and Krishnan, and uh, a special thanks to Ronali also, who was part of this journey here. And uh, let me, you know, compliment the uh, Digital Green team for this wonderful partnership, actually. So, Vijay, coming back straight to your question. First of all, the, the hybrid approach which we used all throughout, you know, during this uh, Sambad project did reinforce and had a wonderful multiplier effect, actually. All the four things, but WhatsApp was at, at some point of time, you know, used much more than the other two, other three, because of the pandemic. But it had a real reinforcing approach. One was reinforcing the other. So that was the first learning. The second one, I would like to share, you know, this, this whole process, when I, when I say it reinforced, had a multiplier effect. You see, we are an organization who believes in social mobilization. Because on the ground, if social mobilization is the key word, government spends a lot of resources on hardware, on many things, but the software, the mobilizing the people, preparing the community, and using the right material to uh, you know, undertake the social mobilization is always relegated to a secondary position. So this was a beautiful tool which really orchestrated and really, you know, what you call triggered of the social mobilization in a wonderful way that was engaging with the community with, with, through a powerful dialogue, through greater ownership at the community level. You know, this was all making a major inroads actually because of this hybrid approach. The second one I would like to say is how, how, do, how is it penetrating into the government system? Uh, we found the content which we had developed very closely, this whole thousand days journey for a, uh, you know, a mother uh, to deal with the child and the nutritional aspects related to that, the, and the maternal health issues. I would say the, one of the biggest beneficiary of this program were the frontline workers of the government. The ASA and Anganwadi workers with whom we worked hand in hand, really they used it during their home visits. And we could see very clearly attendance in the Anganwadi center was going up. IFA tablet distribution was going up. You can see the result was very visible. And they were all getting excited, actually. So excitement of the frontline health workers, frontline, you know, ICDS worker was something was, which was very visible, actually. Then the second aspect related to the government is, you see, on the village health and nutrition day, VHN day, you see, there, hardly there is anything for the dialogue, actually. So in the village VHN day, I could see very clearly when my team was working on the ground, there was a, you know, excitement also in the VHN day because there were materials to discuss. There were po possibilities for an effective dialogue. So, so VHN day was also made effective, actually, and the frontline workers were also getting, uh, you know, excited. Then my third point and your last uh, uh, question, which you raised, uh, what did CYST gain out of it? You see, we initiated with one of the aspiration district, and that was with the tribal population in a district in North Odisha. But at the same time, halfway, we went to other three districts actually on our own. And these other three districts, which were very difficult districts, in fact, we went to the 30th district of the state, which is Malkangiri district. And that district is the most neglected district actually. So without Digital Green's direct support, we were present in Malkangiri, we were present in Rayagada, and we were present in Koraput in our normal program. And we started using the beautiful materials which we had created along with the community here. And we did it. And recently, we did a, you know, last month itself in one of our small, uh, what you call demonstration of two films in a district like Malkangiri, 
the response was phenomenal actually phenomenal and then we could see now we can see the potential and possibility of using this the the kind of uh, community videos in malkangiri with with the community there that will have added and double advantages actually so we are already there in other districts vijay and that is something which we really uh, we liked and then the third part is this was a beautiful partnership with digital green i must celebrate the partnership because there are partners and partners you see many partners they consider partnership as a banking relationship they just transfer the money and forget about it then you have to give reports etc but here here was a live partnership with digital green where we were holding hand on a daily basis actually so intensive was the hand holding so intensive was the collaboration so intensive was the reciprocation sharing and caring work it it really worked actually and we learned quite a lot of things from on the technical front from digital green and i'm sure they would have picked something on the social mobilization as well so i think so this the the and then finally in the covid was the acid test actually when we, when we got got into covid and we started using the hybrid approach i think many materials especially on the uh, hand washing and we also added few others they all were used in almost like about 11 districts of the state actually whatever contacts we had built whatever whatsapp groups we have created district wise and at the state wide they were all using the same materials which were produced before covid you know on on different hygiene and you know other good practices and that was something which was a bonus actually ready made materials and here is a great audience you know with a strong appetite to get something so that at least you know they are very clear why they are doing hand washing and how hand washing is important here so so that's all i think uh, in the first go vijay if i am able to you know if i could respond to some of your questions thank you thank you sir actually that is very heartening to say uh, uh, i mean to hear from you uh, how you were able to uh, scale the approach in more than the district that you've been implementing with uh, samvat pro project and there is a clear um, you know uh, vision to see uh, that uh, this approach will be uh, used by the organization on an ongoing basis in your ongoing activity thank you so much and we really um, thank for for the partnership that you had uh, that we had with you uh, under this project thank you so much thank you so i next i invite uh, dr rajesh karna from wish foundation um dr rajesh karna uh, i think uh, we know uh, how wish foundation has been engaging with lot of digital work uh, in many states in india um especially with the government programs that you're working um from you we want to understand uh, how do you feel that the usefulness and the potential of the samvad approach uh, in 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 health and nutrition and uh, uh, what would be the government programs where digital tools and solutions such as this or uh, similar to this could be efficiently used and what would be the system level uh, areas that we uh, that you think would need further strengthening and improvement to massively replicate such models over to you dr rajesh kanna yeah yeah thank you thank you uh, vijay and uh, first of all uh, let me congratulate and thanks the digital green team to and usid for supporting them you know to take up this huge challenging task of considering behavior change and keeping community at the center of it because unfortunately all over behavioral change efforts have been directed as a top down approach without first understanding what does the community or the beneficiary want so first of all congratulate you know uh, congratulations to the team and moving forward i think it was really heartening to know how a human centered design got converted into a virtual model we are used into blended learning uh, so coming to the question of scaling up so i will 
like to handle it in a uh, two ways you know when you are talking of scaling up it's about scaling up both in terms of horizontal scale up and in vertical scale up now when i look into horizontal scale up i think one of the most important aspect is at this point i think what we have shown is interventions predominantly in maternal child health and nutrition but if we want to go beyond it that's where the beauty will be we are seeing a huge paradigm shift we have a dual burden we are talking of ncds mental health received such a huge boost in the recent budget and we know that the home based care models are going to remain or are going to increase over a period of time and this is where i think the community based messaging and the blended learning approaches of samvad can really use that platform secondly apart from the thematics versus the geographically or when you look into it from a vertical perspective it's going to be your policy legal health systems and budgetary issues and those are the issues which are going to make not only help in scaling up but making it more sustainable over a period of time fortunately at this point of time you know starting from the national health policy we have seen a huge political will and a enabling policy environment being created we had primary health care totally uh, focused on moving from health to wellness and looking into the comprehensive primary health care where we have added domains of ncds mental health geriatric ophthalmology and all those the 12 domains that we see simultaneously on the other side the secondary and the tertiary care where we have the pmjy uh unfortunately and a little bit of challenging what i would say is but when you go to the implementation level you find that one is at the nhm and one is at nha so the interactions the possibilities of coordination between these two and country and creating that continuum from the facility to secondary and tertiary is not happening but here one of the biggest gap has been the community linkages and this is where i think again praja project samvad learning can act as a big opportunity to create that missing link there recently we have also seen the national digital health mission coming up in a big way now i find that that is a fantastic opportunity to create to close the gaps and create more continuity between the various government programs because what the national digital health mission is doing is providing space for innovations to look into the financial management systems the legal issues grievance addresses data analytics diagnostics and e oshadhi we are all talking of so lot of potential but again this is a policy framework and when it goes into implementation the usual systemic issues will have to take care but honestly i don't feel uh you know the challenge has always been that the learnings of one project are forgotten as soon as the project is over now we need a mechanism where all these learnings can be collated and brought and integrated into the next level of projects and i must compliment usid in this way because they have been building on those mechanisms slowly another potential opportunity where i realize is probably the your 15th finance commission which is again emphasizing on strengthening the health infrastructure and especially looking into the urban areas the urban slums the urban poor population being one of the most ignored thankfully what we are also seeing is that apart from the government systems there are new financial mechanisms coming up you know wish organization we have been working together with nha you know in developing a national innovation unit where we are promoting social entrepreneurs and providing them market access and similarly heartening to know usids samrith coming recently you know getting in touch with atal innovation and you know coming with niti ayog so so that's a really good news for the for moving forward one important aspect and especially from the community perspective where i feel can be a real game changer is and where digital green made an attempt you know project sambad is linking with the rural livelihood mission 
Now, this is a mechanism which has already been established. Now, the, cha- the, you know, the thinking is how do we ensure coordination between these two wonderful programs of health, nutrition? Of course, Jivika is trying its best, but can we go beyond MNCH, go into other domains? Because this is one of the most sustainable mechanisms which will bring a lasting change in the health status of the uh, of uh, not only the women and girls in the country, but for the entire country, I would say. And lastly, I would end by saying, please keep community at the center. Our approaches have been too often have been top-down approaches. So really wonderful to see something coming from the perspective of the community. Thank you so much, Paul, uh, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm sorry, I have another meeting, so I will be leaving after a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh Khanna. It's very insightful to hear from you. One, you talked about the horizontal scale and also the vertical scale uh, of this approach. And uh, you had really uh, suggested some interesting uh, uh, ideas of, uh, you know, uh, using this approach, um, uh, you know, in many uh, programs in the government, the digital national digital health mission, um, the PMJ and the uh, NCD uh, programs. So um, I, I think um, um, the organization, the partners who are taking uh, these approach forward, uh, you know, from the Samvat project, uh, will be able to take these uh, uh, points into consideration for further expansion of this approach and use it more efficiently. Thank you so much for your insights. Yeah. It's very yeah, thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Vijay. Just to add that probably Vish is doing and will be here, happy to work with any partner who wants to work in these areas. Thank, thank you. you. Most welcome. So next, I uh, invite um, um, uh, Ms. Akai uh, Mins uh, from uh, NHM Jarkin. Um, um, and uh, Jarkin is one of the first states after Bihar who has really uh, taken this uh, program um, into the system. You know, like first we we saw how. Uh, they kind uh, they increased the number of districts that we actually initially started with, and then um, there are certain um, uh, aspects of this um, uh, um, training and the video production and all of that were uh, uh, in, incorporated into the budget uh, in of the uh, NHM budget, and we leveraged a lot of resources, and we really saw a very um, uh, active uh, participation of the government uh, in this program. And also uh, they really saw a value in uh, scaling this program within Jharkhand uh, in the NHM. Uh, we also had an opportunity to work with the uh, li- uh, nutrition mission and livelihood mission uh, in Jharkhand, but we really saw a very welcoming um, uh, 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 in, uh, insight uh, from uh, the NHM jargon to take this uh, approach forward. And we also, the, the, the NHM mission director has also uh, issued a, a notification uh, for institutionalizing this approach in the uh, system. Uh, with that, I think um, I, I would like to uh, get some insights from uh, Akai to know how uh, how did this uh, uh, experience of working uh, with Samwad um, uh, as actu- in uh, in scaling up um, the approach in the state has helped them? Uh, one in replicating and scaling up uh, in different districts, and also um, what has been your learning in engaging with communities using WhatsApp and Pico Projector? Um, WhatsApp messages during um, COVID. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, pandemic situation when we were not able to reach out to the communities that helped us in uh, uh, sharing messages uh, and videos through WhatsApp. And again, uh, the uh, the government of Jarkin, especially the NHM, uh, took it over uh, this up, uh, um, uh, WhatsApp technology also in sharing messages uh, with the Sayas and uh, and the uh, communities. 
so there's a lot of uh, learnings from um, jarkin and also very good partnership from jarkin uh, akay can you um, uh, elaborate on uh, your experience with samvat project and how you um, plan to take uh, this um, community based approach uh, further into the uh, uh, national health mission uh, program over to so you thank you yeah thank you vijay and uh, first of all i would like to congratulate the whole team of digital green project samvad not only the people who are at the us aid office and the digital green office but the people who really work in the field so it's a it's a time to congratulate the whole team for a grand success of this program and uh, uh, i would like to share some of the experience of jharkhand with samvad project it started in uh, year 2018 uh, with one block of ranchi ranchi is a capital city of jharkhand and uh, ormanji is nearby a block there we started uh, um, identifying ashas which are known is as saiya here and uh, another district we had chosen uh, which was west singung and the block was manoharpur which was very means uh, mmr and imr was very low there and we started with 187 sahiyas with the pico projector and it expanded to more than 700 sahiyas later on we expanded our program Uh, seeing the benefit of the speed pico project uh, and uh, digital green uh, samvad program we expanded it into santal pargana division uh, in pakur district where the tfr was very high when we started this program there at pakur that time jharkhand's tfr was 2.6 and pakur was 3.4 now our tfr is 2.3 and pakur's tfr is 3 so uh, i just wanted to share this because many uh, other uh, initiative has been taken but still this uh, digital green samvad program where sahiya went to the community went to the vhnd uh, place went to the families and they shown the community made videos the people from their community who were telling them about the nutrition about the reproductive health about the contraceptives and people accepted that seeing this what we found that this program was such a nice program even during the covid pandemic time when we were unable to reach to uh, many families physically that time at jharkhand we started this whatsapp program and pico projector uh, uh, sayas were taking during the uh, line listing of uh, people there in uh, during covid period and uh, um, they were showing some community made uh, videos for Uh, sanitation for maternal and child health for birth preparation for nutrition and same times whatsapp message helped our sahiyas for accessing the information from our side and getting informed and disseminating the information and sharing the information to the community and to the family to take uh, and make them aware to take healthy practices action at their level and this pandemic time another uh, good thing happened through samvad project here that when we were unable to train sahiyas physically that time sangam platform of learning online learning all sahiyas they were uh, uh, they were uh, gone through this sangam platform to learn Uh, rmnch plus a uh, information knowledge sharing knowledge practices and uh, somewhat it became a refresher training on rm rmnch a for them and 
it also helped sayas during video dissemination at the family level or any community level they can able to discuss more efficiently with the community and it also helped as a uh, guiding points for them for the discussion and uh, i just wanted to tell all these things when uh, uh, we were doing in our state with a, a team of uh, digital green we tried our best to put in our state program implementation plan for many years but last year we succeeded to get as an innovation innovative program here and this year uh, uh, mpip and uh, uh, this video dissemination program and this year in our state pip we are taking it into a scale as video dissemination will be done in throughout 24 districts and we also identified five district which is aspirational district where our sahyas and our community process team will be trained for video production also very soon we will be having our training for this and uh, uh, which uh, the videos can be uh, of rmnch plus a matters and uh, i would like to share dr khanna that we are going to make videos on ncd programs also because our future plan is to use this pico projector even in hwc health and wellness center where community is coming though we have nutrition videos and uh, rmncha videos but now it is a need of our especially when health is a state subject what we are feeling like we need ncd topics also to be discussed in the community so that people will start uh, thinking about the, the thought process should be started through these videos for social and behavior changes among, uh, among the people for non-communicable diseases also and of course uh, we are training our district team and sahyas also for this for this but we certainly want support from uh, usaid as usaid is a technical partner for aspirational district in uh, jharkhand and we have 19 aspirational districts and we need support of uh, digital green also because in future we are planning to make uh, small community videos for uh, sahyas hbnc and hbyc skills also where more focus is on home visit and home care uh, services so we are planning for that and hwc uh, health and wellness center uh, services also and in future what uh, we are expecting from digital green that though their program is in a successful uh, the, at the end of uh, with a successful result but still we want the partnership for best learning their technical support and for the case studies also or success stories also which is here in jharkhand they should come out with that so uh, looking forward to work together again and again in future also thank you so much thank you akai uh, that's very uh, it's a, uh, i would say it's a music to our ears to know how you are actually the uh, the horizontal and vertical expansion that uh, dr rajesh kanna was mentioning as actually happening in uh, in the state of jharkhand you know you are expanding beyond rmnch including ncd uh, you are using this approach uh, even to train sayas uh, yeah. in uh, home based care and all of that so thank you it is very um, uh, and uh, akai you have been uh, very instrumental in uh, you know uh, in uh, institutionalizing this approach within the jharkhand nhm uh, in many ways uh, you know uh, in uh, including the trainings in the budget and you know in lot of other things that you did with with this approach and we definitely i think digital green would uh, will be happy to support you further uh, in any way, uh, they will be present in the state of Jharkhand, and uh, 
you can really expect their support and um, usaid projects are also uh, impl- other projects are also implement being implemented in chark and we would be uh, happy to help you in any way uh, to taking this forward uh, in future thank you so much and um, we look forward to continue to work with the uh, in the state of jharkhand in any way thank you thank you so i next i would now uh, call upon um uh, uh mahua ji uh, from jivika um i think um jivika is one of the um uh, Uh, initial partner of digital green in uh, experimenting this model uh, with health and nutrition um, you know earlier they were um, uh, using this approach with the agriculture um, um, you know with the in, in the sector agriculture sector later on uh, when they were uh, trying out uh, trying it out with the health and nutrition and jivika is the first partner to work with and lot of things we tested with uh, jivika um so now uh, mahua ji what do you feel uh, how, how do you think uh, you have created a lot of a uh, system also um uh, it, for this approach you know uh, to be scaled within the system uh, you had created uh, district level resources uh, in video production and dissemination and um, uh, also uh, uh, a lot of training the um, uh, bh uh, your uh, frontline workers there so uh, what is your experience how do you think the district level resources in video production dissemination how is going to help you strategically in the long run and what is your plan to replicate and scale up the community video approach in some of the other strategic areas of jivika and how would samvad experience help you in that and what would be, be your suggestion recommendation to organization willing to adopt a similar approach in their work over to you mahua ji thank you so much uh, vijay uh, firstly of course uh, uh, digital green has been a great support to us in implementing and taking up new pilots and new innovations and uh, uh, we have been partnering with uh, digital green for Uh, last seven years and our first experience of community videos approach has been as you mentioned majorly in the livelihood sector but we being uh, majorly a livelihood promotion organization but we realized that uh, you know health is an integral part of livelihood promotion uh, only good health can um, enhance income of the house and reduce uh, expenses uh, on the health uh, so um, when we partnered with digital green and when samvad uh, was initiated we had certain apprehensions to move from the agriculture portfolio to the health portfolio wherein uh, we thought our community video approach might not work because Uh, you know uh, the community videos uh, on health are very sensitive and it might uh, you know uh, breach the trust or the privacy of uh, uh, women because not many women are very uh, eager to freely talk about you know family planning processes or even mother and child health uh, processes so we had certain apprehensions in the initial times so we worked on with the digital green and we had a, a full team of communication in the um, in uh, in brlps where we started working with the community uh, in uh, developing the contents because we uh, place a lot of emphasis on uh, content preparation and here we try because as you know nrlm is a more of a community driven program or a community managed community owned uh, approaches that we would like to instill so that the sustenance of the program continues to remain so that was a area where we got a lot of support from digital green in preparing contents right type of contents 
uh, and then uh, we started leveraging resources from other projects that we had, that is the Bihar Transformative Development Project of World Bank and also the NRLM program to actually capacitate our uh, community members, train them on preparation of the community products and also community videos and also uh, help them with the infrastructure. You know, if you don't have enough PICO projectors, you cannot uh, move on or penetrate much. We work here with 1.24 crores of women. So, uh, and we have uh, over 10 lakh SHGs promoted under GVK. So when we have to reach out to uh, that number of community uh, processes, we need to also invest on the infrastructure. Uh, so we leveraged finances from various uh, sources to put first the Pico projectors in place. And now we have over 6,000 Pico projectors in the uh, at the district at the block level, which means each and every block has at least nine Pico projectors each. And we are aiming at one uh, Pico at a uh, Pico projector at every panchayat. So we there are 8,000 odd panchayats in Bihar and we have reached to around 5,000 panchayats with a Pico. So that that uh, that uh, that way we uh, capacitated or strengthened the program, and then we just don't work on our uh, you know reproductive and mother and child health, but we took up issues of hand washing, we took up issues of sanitation, we took up issues of dietary diversity at the family level. We also took up issues of family planning, and this time we started working on contents where we were sharing life experiences of women, not on what the best practices are, but we basically were uh, building on community videos where a woman has experienced it and with right type of nutrition, with right type of uh, postnatal and prenatal care, uh, the uh, birth weight, uh, the weight of the child at the at birth has improved and uh, uh, a woman talking about her experience or a woman talking about her experience of you know family planning processes which we initially thought that many women would not like to share on a uh, on screen but uh, we started working and as uh, communities always have amazed us with their own uh, wisdom we also got amazed and uh, with their type of uh, initiatives that they were taking but then it is very important to sustain the program by making the program more community driven, community managed and community owned. And that is the reason why we went for extensive training programs. Now, what we did is we uh, identified uh, the right people who, uh, who could make good videos. And then we also strengthened them with giving them with right dslrs and the digital green team also helped in, uh, improve the quality of the video what type of um, uh, uh, you know apps they can use to reduce the sound noise and improve the entire quality of the video so that type of trainings the community uh, people have got from here and we have trained over 300 such uh, community persons uh, across 38 districts of uh, Bihar. So we are uh, reaching out to all the districts of Bihar, all the blocks of Bihar. And we have also trained them on the use of Pico projectors. Yes, this has been our uh, way of working or where the, how we try to instill the entire processes in the community so that uh, even if there is nobody who is trying to say, and we also help them in designing an entire dissemination plan, a production plan. They prepare an entire uh, community video production calendar across the year, and also they prepare a production uh, dissemination plan over the year. And accordingly, they, uh, they disseminate as per the plan. Here, we also have developed a mobile app in which they have to register how many people have seen the videos, which videos were uh, seen uh, screened more, and which videos were demanded more, which videos had a better impact, and also uh, the use of Pico projectors. 
in which themes the pigots are being used, uh, for how many durations they are being used, that's, that's been the process. But then we were struck with uh, uh, COVID and these uh, community processes which we were doing mostly on one-to-one -one basis or uh, in a uh, offline training process more uh, ceased to happen. And we immediately shifted to other digital platforms. Like we started using uh, WhatsApp, we started using Telegram channel. We also had created our own Facebook group, health and nutrition Facebook group, where we uh, involved most of our community uh, resource persons. And through that platform, we started disseminating the videos and also giving trainings at various levels. So what happened um, is that that uh, by this we could only cater to 30% of our entire population because um, not uh, only 30% of our uh, of the population that we deal with are having a, a smartphone or have an access to a smartphone rather. But uh, we were reaching out, uh, leaving out the 70% rest. So again, we developed another mechanism that uh, let our community resource person call another five people in the community and disseminate that uh, training or disseminate that uh, particular audio or um, content to them. So by just calling them, because uh, the feature phone penetration is quite high. It's more than 80% in the rural population that we work with. So that uh, that's how we try to put a chain mechanism out there and we started working with them on this particular area. We uh, also remunerated and incentivized our community resource persons for doing this particular aspect. And uh, uh, in instilling the COVID appropriate uh, protocols, we had been extremely, extremely successful by reaching out to many um, of our over 40 lakh of our SHG women through uh, different modes or digital modes, and we help them in uh, working on these aspects. Uh, I would like to mention here that we do, uh, not only went uh, for community videos on health practices, but we also made videos on mass production. You know, that was the time when there was a huge crisis of masks and we uh, tried to train our SNG women to stitch masks. Now we were giving training on how to stitch masks on a, on a community video plat uh, 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 by making a community video out of it. How to cut the mask, how to stitch that mask, how to, you know, uh, iron that mask and how to uh, give it, uh, 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 give the final shape of the mask. And that was the time when we could train more than 36,000 women through this processes. And here also we took uh, technical help of NIFT Patna, we took help of Digital Green in, uh, in uh, making such videos. And that is how our women got trained. So you see how the livelihood and the health integration is happening in this particular process. And Sangwad, of course, helped us in doing these uh, processes. And because of the technical support that we got from uh, Digital Green, we uh, we were able to reach out to 36,000 women who could make masks. and. Uh, they made around 11 crores of masks and which were procured by various government departments like the education department the election commission and also the panchayati raj uh, department of government of bihar so 11 crores of masks were made in the first and the second um, wave of uh, covid and they could uh, also earn um, make a business of 198 crores so you see uh, you know, it's just uh, not when you are talking of health. So health is so much interwoven with so many other aspects of uh, uh, life. So you can't see it in isolation that this, this needs to be done in health and uh, it cannot be integrated in the livelihood program per se. So this has been our uh, experience and we personally feel that content is more important and content, the community made content is, uh, is the key to the success of this particular program. Why? Uh, because there are various platforms we have used uh, digital green uh, uh, pico project uh, uh, mode of uh, dissemination we have used telegram channels we have used public app 
uh, which is a new um, you know video app which goes where you can post n number of videos to reach out to the uh, local communities then we have used um, whatsapp we have used uh, uh, facebook and we have used various other social media platforms to reach out to the maximum number of uh, rural communities which we work with but if your contents are not strong enough if the content is not giving a right type of a message then you need a human moderation process to you know make people understand what we would like to uh, say or the type of message that we are trying to tell so this particular aspect which i feel the content needs to be really really strong and that they can, that these contents can really uh, aid training it can aid uh, dissemination of right type of information and also improve the um, health and nutrition uh, behavior in the community level is most important and i think that's the usp of the sangwar project uh, that we work with uh, uh, digital green here um yes uh, again i would like to say that if we continuously support our communities with by upskilling them and also provide them with the right required type of infrastructure that they need and strengthen them continuously only then the program can be sustainable and it can be community owned and community managed um, that's what we learned from sangwad program and that's how we instilled uh, the entire processes in jivika and we are doing it really in scale and we are moving on to various other uh, thematic areas as well uh, we've moved from livelihoods farm based livelihoods to livestock based livelihoods to non farm based livelihoods to health and nutrition and we also made some of our videos on institution building and capacity building processes we work uh, we have a very unique project satat jivi koparjan yojana which is basically for the ultra poor families now we have started making videos on uh, the successes of how ultra poor people are getting benefit of this particular project and we are trying to roll that out as well we have used community videos for financial inclusion processes in in also uh, sensitizing our people on the importance of insurance and um, we have also made uh, uh, community videos on uh, another very important uh, topic uh, which is on um, uh, uh, which is basically on various uh, governance procedures that is required to be done in a community institution if you are what needs to be done you know what type of licenses you required we did videos on that and our community institutions and the board members of the community institutions have uh, been the actors in this particular community videos to disseminate that information in that in that particular manner so this has been our success and uh, uh, till date and uh, we are uh, continuously using the community video uh, approach in um, uh, various uh, information dissemination and training processes of our um, uh, of our program and it has been an integral part of uh, gvk's functioning now we don't have any training module without a community video attached to it uh, at present so i think that is what i had to say on our experience thank you vijay for this opportunity thank you mohaji <laughs> it's so impressive to hear from you you know like actually you went into the length and breadth of using this approach in different uh, uh, sectors in different areas and you have been very innovative i would say you know uh, in using this approach and i i would i, I really as an activity manager of this project uh, i really feel so proud and feel so happy uh today to hear from you how this approach has gone to the level in jivika and i think akai also mentioned how they are planning to use it further and still they continuing to use it in a different areas and it, it's it's really um it's a, a really a moment for usaid to celebrate uh at, at uh, now you know at this point in time uh, the success of this project uh, in in such a way thank you so much uh, can i come this. in sorry can please, i come please. in for one minute more yes, yes i just wanted to say that the impact of this particular approach has been such that when we were uh, in one of the chief ministers review program when we shared this thing with him 
then uh, uh, he personally called the health uh, uh, secretary and also the agriculture secretary and said that uh, why can't we use this in agriculture uh, programs and uh, also in the health uh, programs of uh, of the state and that is how the health mission also is now going uh, for the community approach and also the agriculture department has already procured a lot many pico projectors and are going for community approach and again they have approached us to support them in doing so so there's a huge potential and i think the uh, state government of bihar has uh, at length uh, uh, accepted and integrated it in their uh, various programs thank you oh, great that's wonderful and fantastic to hear from you thank you so much i think we want to see this happening <laughs> in the nhm also you know they they should start using this very well thank you so much uh, i think in the interest of the time um, we are uh, we I, I, we will not be able to take questions uh, now uh, digital green will be um, uh, answering these questions and sending it to you uh, in uh, personally later um i would now uh, close the panel um with thanks to all the panelists for all their valuable insights uh, and uh, the way they shared all their uh, experiences and learnings from this uh, project thank you jagatnanda sir um akai uh, uh, mauva ji and uh, dr rajesh also um he has already left but uh, he also gave very nice insights um you know about the um, digital uh, solutions to be used further thank you so much to all of you and i uh, now close and it over to farad for further uh, progress of this event thank you thanks thanks vijay for summarizing the session uh, moving on we are delighted to have ms sangeeta patel with us uh, ms sangeeta patel is a senior us foreign service officer and she assumed the duties of health office as director at usaid india on july 31st 2019 prior to this she was uh, working uh, with usaid in pakistan zambia armenia namibia and washington dc she has worked with usaid since 2000 uh, on programs to promote health and education strengthen the health and social protective protection system further humanitarian assistance and reach vulnerable population before usaid ms patel worked with carter Uh, presidential centers global development initiative the center for disease control and preventions special pathogen unit uh, in atlanta as well as the peace corps and german development organization in madagascar she has an mph in maternal and child health from tulane university a ba in french and a bsc in biology from pennsylvania state university may i invite ms sangeeta patel to comment on samvad journey and uh, us aid support throughout this period Ms. Sangeeta Patel. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me. It's really a pleasure for me to be here with you in this virtual space. Um really it's an honor to really recognize the incredible journey that we've had over the past few years um not only with the Samad project but also with the national health missions, you know. for each of the respective states of course with the nhm here in jharkhand and chatisgarh but also even the wealth of experience accumulated across the project sites in bihar odisha uttarakhand assam really uh, for us what was most revealing i think especially during what you've heard already is we never let go of the hope the heart really the pulse of the community i think that if there's anything that you've learned today it's that it reaffirms what we knew along the way that was that when any situation becomes so difficult whether it's with covid or whether it's unacceptable maternal or child mortality or morbidity infant you know mortality um contraceptive prevalence rates tfr you name it no matter what the situation that if we cannot tap into the heart of communities and we cannot find ways in which to at least share best practices and what we know 
it becomes that much more of a battle, at least in the end, to actually see lasting change. And I think at least for us, and really thankfully to the Sambad Project and the National Health Missions, we've seen that that kind of hard work does indeed translate into results. I think that you've already, you know, had at least some experience in listening to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine uh, Lean Survey data results. You've also heard at least even uh, three more surveys that were done, whether they were phone-based, IVRS, or even community radio. Clearly, if we take the amalgamation of this data and we really look at what really was able to tap into the heart of communities to certainly move the needle on these key indicators. I think we have a wealth of information that can continue to be tapped into, particularly as we move forward and continue to work in a development context in India, and even frankly speaking, in other countries. So for me, I think I'd like to just recognize in the special mention, Jivika, as well as the National Health Mission in Jharkhand and Chatiska, along with our NGO partner, CYSD. I think it's this collective learning, this collective leadership, and really this agenda and commitment to be able to work together across communities and be not, not afraid to take risks, be ava available to adapt. That is what has helped us at the grassroots level to not only continue to share with you today what, was, uh, what worked, but also be open about what didn't. And I think that it's these uh, up and down trajectory, which ultimately also guided us, particularly when it came to technology. I think that uh, while we had, of course, this dream or vision of, you know, handheld video cameras and energizing and mobilizing and really invigorating communities, I think we also realized and adapted to social media platforms such as WhatsApp to again, continue to bolster really the frontline response and the work of healthcare providers, especially as we continue to raise awareness and action. So for me, at least today, uh, you know, some of what we heard already was about the lasting legacy that remains. And that's of course, many of the tools and the wealth of experiences that have been accumulated across this platform, but even things like a knowledge kit that we'll soon be able to share with you at the end of this event, as well as, of course, even um, the knowledge that we directly reached over 700,000 women and ch you know, children and families with key maternal child health and nutrition and family planning messages, and of course, directly impacted the lives of almost 2 million women. So for me, uh, the frontline response of 4,000, or sorry, 5,000 frontline workers from the National Health Mission, as well as the Livelihood Mission, and even the Nutrition Mission is really testimony to the community-based work and responses that we have been striving to transform. I think, again, from my perspective, this is just a huge thank you uh, to really acknowledge this work, to really acknowledge this partnership, and really to take a moment to appreciate that despite all that happened, especially in this critical past several years, even with the overlay of COVID, I think it's, it's a proud moment right now to be able to say that we've been able to impact so many lives and so many people together. 
While the project ends in uh, February, I assure you that the foundation that has been laid and certainly the motivation that has been exhibited not only through the various states, but even across the national health mission, as well as even in tools that you just heard, like the PIP. I hope that we can continue to be able to reach out, to dig into the wealth of information, tools, and resources still accessible, and use that ultimately to continue to influence the behaviors that we know still remain a challenge. So once again, thank you very much for participating in this learning event with me and the team at USAID. And I wish many of you all continued success as we continue to work together in this journey ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sangeeta, uh, for, for your uh, feedback and remarks. It's always been a great pleasure to hear you. Uh, uh, here we come towards the end of this national dissemination event, but before we end, we have a surprise for you. We have come up with some uh, very nice uh, video documentary on Sambad journey. It's comprising of four uh, video depicting our work uh, in the field in the last five and uh, uh, five to six years. Uh, and we are going to release all of those videos today. Uh, may I uh, please invite uh, Ankita, my colleague, to just share and screen this one minute video and make uh, the, this video public. Uh, over to you, Ankita. Uh, thank you, Farad. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure that I'll be uh, playing this uh, somewhat teaser for the audience. Uh, here we go. की एक नई शुरुआत प्रोजेक्ट संवाद परिवार नियोजन हो या चचा बच्चा की सेहत या हो पोषण की जानकारी प्रोजेक्ट संवाद के कम्युनिटी वीडियो के माध्यम से मिल रही है सभी को जानकारी तभी तो रख पा रहे हैं सभी अपने परिवार की सेहत का ख्याल सीख रहे हैं सामुदायिक स्वास्थ्य कर्मी गुर वीडियो बनाने का और लोगों को वीडियो के माध्यम से जागरूक करने का इस पहल के तहत किया गया है प्रशिक्षित 5000 से ज्यादा सामुदायिक स्वास्थ्य कर्मियों को सामुदायिक वीडियो को बनाने और प्रसारित करने के लिए हिंदी उड़िया और छत्तीसगढ़ी भाषा में 100 से ज्यादा लोकल वीडियो तैयार हुए हैं सामुदायिक स्वास्थ्य कर्मियों और लोगों की मदद से प्रोजेक्ट संवाद की शुरुआत जो रच रही इतिहास uh with with this uh button we have uh the uh the sambad documentary live on dg's youtube channel uh please check out our documentary and help us share the word uh the link i'll be sharing it on the chatbot chat box thank you thank you so much ankita uh, now, here we come towards the end of this national dissemination uh, webinar. May I please invite uh, Mr. Krishnan Palasana, Country Director, Digital Green, for the official word of thanks. Over to you, Krishnan. Thank you so much, Farhad and Project Samvat team. And congratulations. I think, though we uh, took much more time than we originally anticipated, I think each and every second was so remarkable. So fantastic. And I want to congratulate the team and also congratulating uh, you for uh, launching these videos on video and it's made available to public from today onwards. Do watch, do spread and do share. Uh, all of us who are uh, with us throughout and who listen to this uh, uh, national dissemination event on Project Samvad, thank you for your participation. There was a range of topics that were discussed today, uh, lessons shared, a number of insightful questions and remarks that has come across. There was a significant uh, interest among the participants to share their thoughts as well as to uh, observe uh, and leave their observations behind. And uh, each and every speaker left back a new dimension in their thought and their lessons. 
and to explore further. I did find these discussions indeed enriching and hope you all had a great webinar experience too. And before we formally close the event, uh, I would also request you to kindly take a minute to leave your thoughts through, through this audience survey to get your feedback on how, how, felt, uh, how you felt the last couple of hours or so. You will find the audience survey link in the chat box right now. And do take some time to leave your uh, uh, thoughts and perspectives to be very useful for us. While Project Samvad has generated a lot of interest and knowledge, allow me to outline three things that stand out. Number one, this community video approach is a proven approach to rapidly scale behavior change among local people and can be adapted to any context, any sector, any geography, any topic. We have, we have proven that over the past five or six years now. Two, this approach that uses technology to accelerate health and nutrition outcomes builds an intrinsic strength, both, horizontal, both at the horizontal and vertical levels of the system. The project has left behind and is leaving behind tangible skills on the community, uh, community as well as certain community assets on ground that will prove valuable in various ways in the days to come. And we also found that the, the, the lessons that we learned are so enormous, so interesting, so important that there's a significant opportunity for us to further strengthen national and subnational policy actions on health, nutrition, and family planning from the lessons learned so far. And to do this from Digital Green side, we'll be very happy to extend any support that will be required by anyone to further advance and scale this approach in India. And we are sure that our partners on ground will also be very happy to uh, provide whatever support that is necessary to further strengthen uh, this approach on ground. I thank to want. I, I want to thank each one of you, and also specifically for Vijay Paul Raj, who admirably uh, uh, led this uh, very challenging uh, 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 the moderated session panel discussion that we had to bring out a range of experiences. Thank you so much, Vijay, and uh, your your moderation also helped us to dig into experiences pre-COVID and also during COVID and how these assistance structures that we have created was actually helpful in delivering those messaging, even some of the most challenges, uh, challenging times that we uh, witnessed in recent times came through, uh, through our participation uh, from our delegates who shared their uh, ideas and perspective. Akai Mins from uh, National Health Commission Jharkhand shared their experiences in using technology to reach the unreached. Jagadananda of CYSD outlined how access to information was built into a women-led rights-based framework in Odisha. We listened to the compelling insights from Mohua Roy Chaudhary on how this video-based approach got significantly scaled up and is uh, integrated into the network of thousands and thousands of self help groups in Bihar. And Dr. Rajesh Khanna from Wish Foundation shared his perspective on use of technology in advancing health and nutrition outcomes, specifically focusing on how such efforts to further strengthen national and subnational policy actions. And of course, we also listen to the truly inspiring words from Sankita Patil, the USAID team head, uh, uh, health team head in India. And, and we are very thankful to USAID for their continuous support. And her words uh, will uh, were so powerful and will continue to motivate us in the days to come. And we are looking forward to working with all of our partners on ground and taking this forward also. Success of Project Samvad is based on exceptional leadership and operational efficiency at different levels, led by our partners on ground and with various other uh, team, uh, partners and organizations who join at different levels at different points of this time. Right. Uh, Jivika and Jharkhand uh, uh, State Livelihood Mission in Jharkhand, uh, OHM, uh, uh, the National Health Missions in uh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Assam, uh, Uttarakhand, Odisha, etc., and CVSD in uh, uh, Odisha were instrumental in driving this forward. We had London School of Health and Tropical Medicine who supported us in design and delivery of the surveys and evaluations. And of course, uh, all the colleagues and team members from USAID and their wonderful, wonderful health team in India. 
We are truly indebted, truly grateful to all of you. And, uh, and, and without your involvement, without your leadership, with your, your ownership, the Project Sambat wouldn't have left such a fantastic, successful tracks uh, uh, history behind. Uh, if you have not it done, do uh, download the feedback form uh, that's available right now in the, the chat board and give a moment of your time to give us your insights. I also want to take this time to thank my colleagues from within Digital Green who have been tirelessly working all these days to make Sambat a great initiative. Farhad, Sanjeev, Ronali, uh, Shams, and all our Sambat team members uh, in Delhi as well as in different states, and also supported by our colleagues from India as far as some outside, including Drikin, Shreya, Tityana, Namita, Erika, Ankita, Urna, and many more. There were many who uh, worked with Sanj uh, Sambat uh, uh, team in, in the previous years, and we are all in, uh, truly grateful for all of you for your contribution to Project Samvad. Uh, but you have moved on, but your uh, whatever you contributed still remains and will be remembered uh, forever by also, all of us. Thank you so much, and we greatly appreciate all your involvement uh, in, in, in this project. We'll be, of course, sharing the recording and report of this event at the earliest with all of you. We also made available the videos that, uh, uh, that launched uh, 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 launched a, a, a while ago, as well as various other learning documents that we've made available publicly and all, all, also will be made available to all the participants, registered participants of this event and will be shared with you physically uh, uh, within the next one week or so. And uh, uh, while, while we are starting to feel happy that the worst of the pandemic may be over, let's also continue to take care of ourselves and, uh, and, and, and stay safe uh, in the days to come. Once again, Thanks to our partners, thanks to USID, thanks to the Digital Green uh, India team. Thanks for all the participants who logged in today. Thank you for joining us today and wishing you all a wonderful evening. Let me sign off this from this fantastic Project Samad event. Thank you and do take care. Bye-bye.